Hey, my name is April Weaver, and I want for my small group to be like a fellowship, community type get together. But I want it to be a specific age group, and that age would be um, probably 17 to 25. And usually you would do like 18 to 25, but I think 17 because there are a lot of people where I live, or a lot of students where I live that have actually already started college at that age. And I feel like it's good to do 17 to 25, um, 25 the oldest, just because like there are still some people in college and they can help bring more maturity to the group. And I just feel like that's very important. Um, but I don't want for it to be high school specifically uh, congregated with, uh, college students, because that has caused some issues, um, in the past for me leading a small group like that, and a college guy trying to date a high school student from my group, so trying to keep it just college, uh, and I don't want for the young, or the the younger college students to feel left out because most of them have graduated at that age and I think I would just make sure that they are in college. Usually they would be attending Wallace State or um, just a online college but still living with their parents because you know they're too young to live on their own that kind of thing. Um, but it would be focused on the get together community and just um, fellowshipping. And I think that's the most important part of a small group. And most people say, well, don't just do a hangout small group. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I think, you know, it would need to be weekly for people to be held accountable, but I want for people to be able to uh, definitely understand one another as well. Um, I feel like that's something we forget to do and something we forget to allow our students to do. I guess you could say students because if you're a leader, you have students. Um, and I want to let mine be able to actually have time to communicate and understand understand each other's lives really like learn about each other like the simple things maybe but more deep but I mean you can ask like hey like what do you like to do for fun or what's your favorite color what's your favorite food you know things like that but also I want for the group to dig deeper by the end of the semester or whatever and I want for it to be um like hey how are you communicating better with Jesus this week or or uh what is it that I could pray for you about you know something like that um that's how my last small group turned out and it was amazing to see people actually pray for each other and I just I want to say that again I want to see them dig deep and actually want to understand each other uh my last small group I had these twin guys um I think they were at the age of 18 then but now they're about like they're about 20 um, I was 20 whenever I held the group, and now I'm 21, uh, but about to be 22, but whenever I held the group, I had it from a certain age range, and, uh, I made it to where all of the students could come, as well as early college students, like early age college students. And, um, I did the same kind of thing except for a different sport each time, which kind of got hard. 
Um, <laughs> and so these twin guys came and they were so nice and they, they were very shut off at first, but towards the end they started like actually being like, hey, when's our next small group, you know, and like actually talk to me at church in front of people and they are not the type for that. <laughs> um, they would never ever do that. Uh, if it wasn't for us being in that small group together because they are more of the keep my status type guys, but it, like I just saw a transformation in them. And then we also talked about our love for like helping people and I got to talk to them about that. And uh, we got on the next Mexico mission trip and went to Mexico together. Um, and it was awesome because I really got to see them grow even more. Like I already see that, like saw them grow up to this level of spirituality that I was like barely at. And then they like excelled that during that trip. Um, they had no fear of talking to the children, picking the children up. And in Mexico, we were mostly in a dump the, probably 75% of the time. We were inside of a dump that goes from Tapachula to Guatemala. But the thing is, is people live there. And um, these boys were not prepared for what we saw. And they said, if you're going to cry, like, please don't cry in the hut or house or whatever you want to call it. And so I saw one of the boys who was more like quiet, I guess, like the more introverted one. And um, he just kind of tapped my shoulder and he like did his head like that, like, I got to go. Um, so, he, he was not prepared for what he saw, but what he got out of it was even greater, and he helped so many people, and so did the other twin. Um, but the, the reason why I say that is because I also want to talk about missions. I don't want for our group to just hang out and have fun and, you know, like, talk about Jesus, yeah, but... I don't want for that to be the only thing. I want for us to also talk about helping other people.